St. G Sports has been an organization making a lot of waves in the open bracket, but this team that qualified actually had the best overall ranking that Sage has ever had, and it's a brand new roster. So let's take a look to see what Sage has to offer for Pool D. I also had a chance to sit down with their coach, Adam, to kind of pick his brain as far as what this roster brings to the mix that previous ones weren't able to do in this episode of 32 on 32. Cod fans, welcome back. Good to see you. I'm just happy to be here. I, I know you are too. That's why you click the video and you're ready to go. You're ready to learn about Sage Esports. And I'll tell you, this is a team worth learning about. Pool D is going to be a very interesting one for this squad. And like I mentioned, this is a squad that, or at least an organization, I rather should say, that's been represented at pretty great length in the past, but have not really found the placements that I think that they were initially hoping for based on the rosters that they had. You find this new team as they put together and they actually pull out the best placement that the Sage organization has had yet. Good luck. So let's take a look at the roster as a more wide hole as we take a look at Pool D. Again, it will be consisting of them with Reciprocity and Envy and then Legend Status, a team that they have some pretty considerable experience against. So for Sage Esports, Cells, Tom Gravity, Hollow, Vivid, and Rex. And I think for a lot of you guys out there, even if you have not watched the open bracket uh, coverage in the past, um, you probably recognize these guys from their performances on UMG and CMG and other OLTs that have been held throughout the entirety of the year. These guys are extremely active and they've been grinding hard and it's finally starting to really kind of get them to the next level. So let's learn more about this Sage squad, shall we? As far as the history of this team goes, again, all five of these players have played at essentially every single open event with the exception of Tom, who did not play at Anaheim. So you take a look at their experience from Vegas. It was Tom Gravity, Vivid, and Rex that were actually representing the PLQ, but on different teams. It was FC Black for Gravity, and then Mazer for Vivid and Rex. Meanwhile, though, the rest of their teammates, Hollow and Cells, were able to actually get themselves a top 48 finish when they were playing together on Team War. Fast forward to Fort Worth. None of the teams that were obviously in the PLQ were able to get picked up into the CWL proper, but a very close consideration because Gravity finished first with FC Black as they were able to take down Mind Freak in the finals. Cells also with a top six finish within control that was actually matched with Hollow and Vivid. Again, building off that experience that a lot of this team has together. Another finisher at Fort Worth was the top 24 from Rex, who stayed with Mazer Gaming after the PLQ, and that was pretty much a complete shredding of the initial roster and making up a new one. Then you fast forward to London. Again, all five players make the trip overseas. Quite an experience, I'm sure, but Cells and Hollow continue to play together, this time for J4L which was a roster that, honestly, I was surprised didn't perform better than they did, considering the roster that they had. A little bit of unfortunate nonsense that happened in the bracket. A top six finish for Vivid, who actually was initially on that Sage roster, and that's when this roster really started, or this organization, rather, really started to make some noise. Like, okay, Sage, we see. You picked up a hell of a team, and you did really well with it. Then you get to Anaheim, and that Sage team thinks a little bit lesser of Vivid being a part of it, and they don't do all that well. He ends up joining Elite Esports, where he finds a top 16 finish, but now it's actually going to be Cells with Hollow and Rex playing together. So Cells and Hollow, a lot of experience together in this title in specific. Rex joining in, I think one of the, the later players that kind of joined the squad with Tom Gravity. But Tom has been insane at this game so far, and definitely a huge pickup, and probably a lot of the reason for success that Sage was able to finish in the fourth place spot. This team went 25 and 10 in the open bracket for a fourth place finish. They did get initially knocked out of the winner's bracket by Sicario a little bit earlier on than I think they would have liked to have had, to be completely candid with you. This was a finish the, against uh, Singularity that happened in the, the winner's round five, or pardon me, round four. So it was actually the round that would have gotten them to qualify uh, four championships just off of winning that. It went to Game 5 versus Sicario Gaming before they were taken out. And then it was a hefty loser's bracket run as they had to find themselves against the team that eventually knocked out, or just previously, knocked out Mind Freak. That was Owlfire GG. They found a 3-0 there. They beat Legend Status in the following round 3-1. And then they start to kind of stomp around some people. A 3-0 versus Trainhard and a Game 5 win versus Aspire. And then they get the revenge against Sicario. They play him a second time and find a 3-1 win against them in round 10, getting them to the loser's semifinals against Mazer, where they would unfortunately drop in game five. If that doesn't tell you about some of the resiliency that this squad has, I don't know exactly what would. Fortunately, 
to kind of help my case, I had this chance to sit down and talk with Adam, the head coach of Sage, and how he's been able to kind of work his way into this organization and how he's found some favor with the five guys from Sage. Joining me from Sage, I've got Adam, head coach, and uh, I would say spiritual leader. I'm just going to say that. I don't actually know Adam yeah. all that well, but I'm just going to say spiritual yeah, leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Adam, you've, you have my attention, sir. This squad is interesting because it's mostly uh, a collaboration of players that finished top 16 at Anaheim, three of the mm -hmm. five from X180. Uh, but yeah. this is the best finish that Sage has had. So kind of tell me about this team as far as how it's special from teams previous for Sage. So this team is special because I think all of the all the players work really well together. First of all, they're all like good friends in and out of game. Um, you know, before you had you had cells, you had hollow and you had Rex. Um, they're all good players. And then we bring over um, uh, Vivid, who's our like entry entry player. He's mm -hmm. he's actually unbelievable. He is like super good. And then we bring over Gravity from uh, formerly FC Black. Uh, he ended up winning the four with open bracket. I was actually at that event. I was like, I'm, I'm like friends with him. So that's how like I sort of like helped the team. Uh, I came over with him before before Miami. So I've been helping them since like before Miami. And I think that we can go pretty far champs. It's, it's just really interesting because even that X180 squad was kind of a big surprise when it came down to their mm -hmm. performance at Anaheim finishing top 16 there. But you mentioned Vivid who played with the lead esports also top 16 and Gravity, yeah. kind of that, you know, fifth ringer to kind of come through. You mentioned yeah. FC Black in the past. And he's, it just kind of seems strange that out of all the players that played with FC Black, that he was kind of left on the outside looking in when it came down yeah. to everyone else essentially being picked into the CWL. Um, so when it comes to him specifically, uh, does that kind of boost this team's mentality of, hey, like, this is not just us being at champs, but we want to actually make some super waves to kind of maybe rub it in people's faces a little bit that, you know, <laughs> yeah, I should have been yeah, there yeah, too? No, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think Tom is... It deserved to be in the pro league the whole year. I think that guy is absolutely unbelievable. I think he's super talented. I mean, you see the numbers that the FC Black players put up in the pro league. You have Phantoms, oh, yeah. Asim, Selium, you know, even Zuma, Simp, even. Like, Tom is just as good as all those players. And I, I think that um, if he got his chance in the pro league, I think he would have put up similar numbers. I think we would have been contending for a championship all year long. I think with this team, though, um, we're focused more on a, on a team effort, not so, so much as we're not playing individual players or anything like that. Sure. We're playing to, you know, really focused on the team game. And I think that, um, you know, I've been helping them, like I said, since Miami, and we've just been really focusing on just fine tuning our, our team roles and stuff like that. And I think that we're not really focused on having one player go off or playing around one player. So I think, I think that's where our, our team strengths are, to be honest with you. And it's interesting you bring that up because your guys' pool is one where there have been some issues with the teams that are kind of around you with mm -hmm. maybe the exception of reciprocity. But I guess one could argue that, you know, they've been dealing with a couple of sub-ins yeah. and sub-outs. Uh -huh. So, I mean, there might yeah, be some uh -huh. consideration there. But when you take a look at your pool consisting of legend status, team envy, and reciprocity, mm -hmm. uh, where do you guys feel like your strengths are compared to some of those teams? So, we actually played legend status at the uh, at the Miami Open. We ended up beating the 3-1. We lost a, uh, a game game two round 11 i think I, th I i don't remember which one of the players but i think one of the players dropped 20 kills so i mean definitely an individual, individual performance to that map uh when it comes to them though i think i think they'll be okay for us i think we stack up really well against them like i said um for Ek for envy and wreck i mean we're not really going into this pool um thinking like we can't like do any noise like we're thinking that like we have the chance i mean cells hollow you know, vivid rex like they've all been in the scene for a while now right and cells and right. cells cells and hollow have been playing for for years now so it's not like they're they're new or anything like this we're just going into the pool thinking like if we play our game we're not really worried about what other teams can do to us we're worried about what we can do so we're trying to focus on us right now and we're trying to figure out like what we can do to beat those teams that kind of stuff sure now for the viewers out there that may not have had a chance to watch this squad in specific play under the sage banner mm -hmm. when you guys were at anaheim what would you say are like the key things to kind of like look out for when it comes to like the scariest elements of this Sage squad or like the biggest power so, of flexes yeah. when it comes to it? Yeah. So I don't want to give away too much to be sure. honest with you because like I don't I don't want to talk about like stress or anything like that because <laughs> I don't know who's gonna be watching this. But um, I mean I think realistically it just comes down to you know us showing up and just you know playing our game. Uh, you know we're pray we're playing every night for eight hours pretty much, going over stuff, fine tuning everything like that. Um, I mean realistically I really don't think we have a weak link on our team. I, I think all five of our players are super strong. And I, and I think that if we play our game, I really think we can beat anyone in the game. 
It's obviously going to be needed, not only to get through yeah. the pool, but to make a run. Yeah. You know, maybe there's a yeah. Cinderella story in the works I mean, for you guys. Yeah, if, 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 you go, if, you, if you go to Champs and you don't think that you're, you're playing to win, I, why are you going in the first place? Uh, thank you. So. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to say it, but I'm glad that yeah. you did, because those are yeah. essentially the thoughts that I've had with a lot of uh, yeah. uh, these pieces that are done. Is you know, yeah. Obviously, uh -huh. everyone thinks, you know, if I were to ask you guys, who do you think is going to win World Championships? If you don't say yourself, that's a problem yeah. in the first right, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 100%. Well, cool. Um, it's a lot of good inf inside information. You guys had a 25 and 10 map record when you guys are at uh, Miami, one of the best ones out there. And obviously, yeah. you know, tough losses versus Sicario and Mazer. So when it came down to those losses in specific, uh, what were some of the biggest takeaways you think about, you know, the squad versus how they handled those losses and moving forward? So the Sicario loss was kind of interesting because, you know, we played uh, a frequency S and D where we got one V three round 11. And that's not, never something that you want to like have happen. Right. Um, it was a tough situation. We actually played them in an online tournament where the same situation happened a week before, um, which a lot of people don't know. Cause I don't, I don't think it was streamed, but um, you know, we're just working on, you know, our situationals. Um, I mean, we ended up beating Mazer later in the tournament. I think was, I think or not Mazer. Sorry. We ended up beating Sicario later in the tournament. I think in losers bracket, uh, I think it was a three, one win, mm -hmm. um, that time. So we got a revenge, which is good. Uh, the major loss. I mean, Mazer's a really good team, you know, four out of those, I think three out of those three or four out of those five players have been in the pro league this year. And they've been on for on a majority teams. of the year too. Yeah. yeah for a majority <laughs> year. So, I mean, those are, those are good players. Um, I think us and them and probably aspire are probably the top three teams coming out of the open bracket when it comes to like NA teams. Um, you know, we play all those guys online all the time and uh we split maps consistently uh we play well against them they play well against us sometimes i mean they play a team game as well uh, they're they're not you know they're not built around one player either you know you can't be built around one player in order to succeed in this game so i mean it really comes down to um like i said team game and i think those two teams are are unbelievable well, it seems like you guys have a pretty good head on your shoulders when it comes to how you guys are approaching the pools uh best of luck yeah. to you adam thank you so much for thank taking you. the time yeah. really appreciate picking your mind for a little bit yeah no problem Again, this is a pool that I really think could potentially be up for grabs, depending on what Team Envy we see. I still have a lot of favor that Team Envy is going to clean things up and be a good squad, but this Sage Esports squad is definitely scary, and you also have to be in mind that Legend Status was able to learn a lot from their loss versus Sage, and are going to be looking to know what to play up against them, and more importantly, I think, what not to play up against them in that 3-1. So... For me, you look at this pool as a whole, and Sage is going to have to do some magic when it comes down, I think, to the search and destroy. But beyond that, I need to see good improvement in the control, because this is a pool that's really not super great at control. And the team that's able to learn it and be best at it, I think, honestly, is going to be the team that's able to meet Reciprocity in the top two. Yes, Reciprocity is not the greatest control team, but they're still a very strong team, and I think they've pretty much locked in one of their spots in Pool D. It just comes down to who's going to be the second one. I think Envy, if they come out and play to the capability that the roster would suggest, I think they'll be able to do just fine. However, if Sage Esports have different things in the works and they do really well in Search and Destroy and are able to at least take a control, if not a hard point, that puts a lot of favor, I think, into their corner of the ring. So, I have good expectations. I think it's going to come down to just what happens between this Envy and Sage uh, matchup. I think that Sage should have no problem versus Legend status. It'll be a little bit more of a tall task, I think, to take down the experience and the um, exposure that Reciprocity have had with one another, the familiarity that's already there in that roster. So it'll be a little bit more of a stretch, I think, that could beat Reciprocity. But I think this game versus Envy is completely winnable. And if they go 2-1 and one in this pool, they will likely come out as at least a top two team. Um, in Pool D to make it past the top 24 mark. That's going to do it on Sage Esports. Hope you guys learned a lot, and hopefully maybe we created some fans for you guys. Let them know on social media if you enjoy this squad and you're hoping for good things for them. Till the next one, though. Hope you guys all keep holding it down. Later, later. Bye-bye.